Hello and welcome to today's webinar. Uh, my name is David Cash. I'm a member of the marketing team here at Mounts and uh, I'm glad that you took the time to join us today for this uh, rather exciting and different uh, style of webinar that we normally uh, do. And in this case, uh, we're talking about uh, data collection, we're talking about uh, process control, uh, we're also talking about error proofing and all of those automation uh, components and how they can help uh, in your assembly process uh, to keep better track of information um, and the uh, total uh, build process. And so um, as we uh, move forward uh, today, uh, we're talking about um, how we can improve the process uh, control with uh, Torque uh, data integration. And so, um, as I mentioned, we have a lot of things going on uh, for today's uh, webinar. And um, when we initially talk about the, the fastening um, process, the automation, the uh, workflows that go with that, um, uh, the uh, components of it all um, typically work uh, together quite nicely with uh, the automation uh, type of products. And so, uh, we we'll want to be able to um, capture data, uh, be able to have that uh, centralized, um, be able to be stored, um, and be able to be accessed uh, with the uh, pertinent information uh, that you might need for uh, your process. Um, and this is going to really um, help to reduce um, error rates. Um, you don't need to necessarily uh, look at uh, individuals um, relying on them to be able to uh, follow out and move through the, the process of the assembly process. Um, it does give us that ability to record uh, a lot of what is happening um, through the time date stamp features uh, and things like that. But when we look at um, the all of the components that um, uh, encompass the uh, automation process. Um, again, it's repetitive tasks uh, that we can um, help to uh, alleviate uh, any type of uh, errors that may happen uh, because the operator may not be paying attention that, uh, that nice. Uh, we can help to um, increase production uh, by automating um, certain uh, aspects. Uh, the operator does not necessarily have to uh, worry about changing a specific uh, tool or preset. Um, we can help to reduce our, the tooling costs by uh, using a, a system that allows you to have more uh, than one uh, particular preset. Um, and uh, we can help to uh, reduce um, the uh, processing time uh, that it may take to uh, look at specific uh, problems um, or or errors that uh, that may that may come up, and so um, when we talk about um, data collection um, and um, the things that uh, we can uh, collect uh, around the fastening process, so there are a number of different items that we can control. Uh, we can uh, look at. For example, uh, the uh, torque that was delivered, uh, the time that it was done, the date. Um, in uh, our system as well, there are some uh, a number of different other things that we can look at um, as far as the total uh, amount of turn or angle that happened during a rotation um, or during a fastening process. Uh, we can also see if there was an error, uh, what that error rate was. Uh, and so, uh, all of that um, manufacturing uh, data um, really helps us to be able to uh, control uh, the process. It helps us to be able to um, look at information and make decisions quickly about what or what may not be happening uh, for a specific assembly. Um, so having the uh, ability to look at uh, and see what is actually happening uh, with the components that are being built uh, this gives us uh, a real advantage to be able to be nimble uh, and be quick as it relates to um, how we can help to improve um, our process. And so um, when we uh, talk about uh, error proofing, um, the uh, idea here, again, um, as it encompasses with uh, the actual uh, automation process, uh, is that we don't allow the operator uh, to have the ability to uh, make a mistake or a, a common uh, type of error, such as uh, not 
fastening um, a large sequence of, of fasteners, um, not fully uh, torquing a, a particular fastener, uh, leaving uh, fasteners that may be lifted, um, or just generally not uh, paying attention to what it is that they're actually uh, trying to do. And so with the, uh, the air proofing process, we can control uh, how the operator does it, um, how uh, and where the operator does it, um, and we'll definitely show you that uh, in uh, today's example. Um, and so uh, when we look at um, the, uh, the DC or smart uh, electric screw uh, driver, um, again, uh, we help to eliminate any type of um, human error that, uh, that may be associated um, with a, a standard uh, clutch tool or uh, things like that, that we have the ability to control a lot of what's happening uh, during the rundown. Um, and through the uh, automation process, we can uh, help to develop and use uh, different presets in a variety of different ways uh, to create an assembly build. Um, and then we also have uh, the ability to do uh, the sequencing with that, that particular build. And then we also have uh, the ability to monitor or uh, capture uh, the data. As I mentioned, we can capture the torque data. Uh, many of the systems um, have a transducerized uh, sensor um, in the tool itself. So we're constantly measuring um, what's happening uh, with the, uh, the torque. Um, and that's done through, again, the use of a transducer. And so by uh, integrating a, an air proofing system, a, uh, a smart uh, DC control tool, um, we do have that ability to basically lock down and air proof uh, an assembly uh, that may uh, be giving um, the, uh, the operator um, the opportunity to uh, do or produce errors. Uh, and the other thing with the, uh, the DC system is that we do get the data uh, from that, uh, all of that information from the rundown, as I mentioned, uh, when we were talking a little bit about the data. So with that, um, again, today's uh, demonstration is a little bit different. We're going to do a, uh, a, a, an assembly build uh, that's gonna have several uh, different steps uh, and uh, for us to be able to do uh, and provide the, the data, uh, what we're going to do is uh, simulate uh, basically a, a DC control tool um, that is e either placed on a, a network um, or there's some other uh, ways that we can uh, pull the data, but we're gonna do some real-time monitoring um, with the use of our software. And so I have um, our DC control tool here uh, placed on uh, the network. I also have uh, my uh, laptop uh, on the network. And with that, we're going to be able to access the, the DC tool uh, and we'll be able to pull that data uh, from the uh, actual uh, fastening um, and what happens during uh, the particular assembly build. And so uh, with that, we're going to um, uh, make sure that everything is connected uh, correctly, and then we'll go ahead and uh, jump into that. But first, um, we have our uh, our poll question, and uh, so if we can go ahead and launch that. Um, so uh, obviously, uh, you can see that there on the screen. But uh, what fastening processes do you want to uh, implement uh, in your processes? Uh, workflow automation, data collection, um, or error proofing, or or all of the above. And uh, so I'll give you a, a few seconds to go ahead and uh, do that, and then we'll move on. All right, uh, I want to thank you very much for uh, participating in our poll question. Uh, and it looks like the majority, um, more than half, uh, want to try to implement um, all of these different strategies. Uh, so 
that is uh, is good news. So we'll be able to uh, certainly um, give you a good uh, example of uh, what that may look like um, with our uh, assembly. And so uh, in the, the demonstration, um, as I mentioned, uh, we're going to do a, um, uh, a, a number of different things that are going to highlight different features within um, the different fastening uh, profiles or uh, strategies within um, the tool. Uh, and again, also with the error proofing process. And so uh, the first thing we're going to start with is going to be the uh, helicoil uh, installation. Um, so uh, if you're not familiar with uh, helicoils, they're basically uh, threaded inserts. Uh, that are used primarily in the uh, automotive, aviation um, type of industries. And they, they really help to give you uh, a really um, secure and uh, strengthened uh, bolted assembly. Uh, and so uh, for our example, though, it's going to be a, a little bit different. I have uh, some plexiglass acrylic uh, that I've uh, uh tapped and we'll do the uh, installations into the acrylic. So you'll be able to kind of see a little bit better about what's going on with that uh, process. And so with the helicoil installation, um, we're going to use a uh, an angle uh, type of fastening strategy. Um, and this is where we can uh, run the fastener, or in this case, the helicoil uh, to a certain amount of turn um, within uh, the insert. Uh, and then we'll pull the uh, fat, or excuse me, we'll pull the bit or or mandrel um, out of the uh, the hole, leaving the helicoil insert behind. Uh, and we'll do that with the use of our angle after torque up feature, which gives us the ability to add a turn um, after an operation has been completed. And so this this added turn can be either in the forward position or uh, in a reverse. Um, so in this case, we're going to use it in reverse. Um, but if you did have a, a torque plus angle type of specification, we could uh, set that up as part of a preset uh, that we're using. Um, so in this case, we're using um, basically six different presets uh, throughout the, the process. We're going to be using uh, preset one, uh, two, three, five, uh, six, and 15. Um, just to kind of show you the, uh, the way that that would work um, with the, uh, the process. And so um, that's one aspect of our um, example. Um, and we have a total of a 10 um, helicoils that, uh, that we'll be inserting. Um, the other thing uh, that's noted about uh, the use of helicoils, um, in this case, I'm using a bit with a mandrel, um, typically, uh, helicoil installations is not done uh, like I'm showing you, uh, where we'd be putting the helicoil onto the bit by hand. Uh, it can be done with a bit that may be have the helicoils um, in a long tape, uh, and then the, the helicoils will filter through as they're being placed. So uh, this by no means is the, uh, the ideal uh, helicoil type of uh, assembly, but uh, it's going to give you a good idea of uh, what uh, that may look like if you've not seen uh, that before. And so um, with that, then we do have uh, the um, a top plate that's going to be going on top of our rails, our acrylic rails. Um, there are 10 uh, M8 uh, by 1.25 millimeter fasteners that we'll be using. Um, they are uh, set uh, to, uh, well, the heel coil installation is set to uh, be set at around 3,000 degrees of rotation. Uh, and then because of the gasket that we have on the top plate, we're going to be doing a two-step rundown uh, on that uh, assembly. So we'll do a crisscross pattern um, at two separate torque values. Uh, and again, um, as I mentioned, this is not uh, a, uh, a fastening um, or materials uh, type of uh, demonstration, but uh, we just wanted to give you kind of um, the, uh, the flavor of uh, how we can do different assemblies. So in this case, we're going to do a, um, a, a multi-pass, uh, uh, and we'll be using our uh, process control uh, with that. Um, so we'll be using um, our DPC touch, uh, and with the touch, uh, this basically gives us the ability to control 
uh, everything that's happening uh, with the assembly. And so we can um, not only control the position uh, of where the tool has power, so the operator can't um, put the, the tool in the wrong uh, spot. So the only place that the, uh, the tool will work is in the correct location that we've uh, outlined in the, um, the programming. Uh, we can also pull uh, or call which uh, preset we want the DC control tool to use um, with that. We also have the ability to add other peripheral devices such as pictolite sensors. Uh, there could be proximity sensors. Um, there are a number of different uh, communication devices that we can uh, work with, either a PLC uh, or some other line control devices. And then we can also uh, use light trees and, and some other uh, indications like that. I don't have that set up for this demonstration, but that is a possibility with the, um, the touch. And so there are 12 uh, inputs and 12 outputs that we can utilize uh, to be able to satisfy uh, whatever the, the um, actual um, application uh, may need. And so uh, let's go ahead and uh, jump right into it. And so um, with, uh, this is our, our touch unit here. Um, I have our assembly uh, that we'll be working on here. Um, in the uh, upper uh, left is our, uh, what would be our data stream. Um, and then uh, we have the uh, controller uh, and what that is going to uh, provide us. And so um, right now it's asking me to scan uh, the product ID barcode. And what this does is this allows us to be able to um, basically uh, give us the ability to uh, take a certain component or a part um, that has a, a barcode. We can scan that uh, barcode and then that barcode gets um, embedded into the data stream. And so um, if you look here um, on the, uh, let me just move this real quick. Uh, if you look in the, uh, the middle right there, you'll see the barcode. Uh, and so this is the, the serial number for the, the Gila coils uh, that I'll be using. Um, and the, uh, the touch here is telling us, um, or it's asking for confirmation uh, for us to be able to uh, move forward uh, with the process. And so you can see um, on the tool here that it's locked. There's no power um, to the tool uh, that we have right now. So unless I move on um, to what uh, the directions are telling us, um, I can't do anything. So I'll go ahead and scan the barcode again, uh, and then I'll confirm that I did that um, on the uh, uh, on the, uh, the touch itself, and so now in this case, um, I have uh, it set for us to be able to put on the uh, the helicoil onto the uh, the mandrel or the bit, and so uh, this is what the the touch is telling us to go ahead and load this. Uh, and again, this is not the uh, the ideal way to go ahead and do this, but um, so basically, I'm just holding the helicoil. Um, it, it does get stuck onto the unit. Um, we've uh, had a good uh, signal back from the tool that the helicoil has been uh, added. And now we can go ahead and put it uh, into our uh, acrylic uh, block here. And so uh, you can see, again, the, uh, the tool is in the lock position. But when I get over the, the correct location, and you can see that the, uh, the image has now turned green. We do have power to the tool. So I can go ahead and uh, run this. Okay, and so uh, now we've done our one uh, insert um, here. And so you can see on the, the side here that we have uh, our helicoil. Um, uh, is, uh, has been placed inside of our uh, threaded um, hole here. And so we'll continue uh, doing um, that for the remainder. So again, just follow the instructions um, here. I'm gonna be loading the next helicoil. All right. 
and you can see that we're capturing all of this data uh, as it goes through. So again, if I try to put it into a uh, another hole, especially one that has already been done, uh, we cannot. Uh, there's, again, no power to the tool unless we're in the right position. And so we are kind of flying blind here or uh, flying without a net or <laughs> working without a net. Um, I don't have a helicoil uh, installation uh, removal bit. So uh, what this will uh, do if we do uh, need to make some adjustments, uh, we can. Uh, So again, these are simple uh, angle uh, steps. Uh, so the uh, as I go ahead and load uh, the helicoil, uh, we're looking at around 2,700 uh, degrees of rotation. Uh, when I go to do the insert, um, we uh, are looking to do uh, about 3,000 degrees of rotation. Once we hit the 3,000 degrees of rotation, uh, the fastener uh, or the, the bit will, uh, or excuse me, the tool actually puts uh, the drive in the reverse direction um, and it runs uh, at that uh, for about 3,800 degrees of rotation uh, to be able to fully uh, come out of the, uh, the bit or out of the, the hole here, I guess. So all this time we are uh, getting the uh, the data from what has happened. Um, if I didn't finish completely, I think I let go of the trigger too soon there. Um, we don't get the uh, actual information um, or we can't move on to the next uh, step. So now here we are again, are moving to our So there is a, another way that this could be done. Um, we could also use a, a torque uh, type of step, um, especially with this type of uh, mandrel or bit, um, so that if the, the bit uh, itself was to make contact uh, with the surface, uh, it would uh, then reach that torque value and then automatically uh, reverse. But in this case, uh, we're simply doing the uh, the angle. And then finally, our last one. All right. Now we can uh, go ahead and move on uh, with our assembly. Um, but just to show you, um, the, uh, the inserts there um, are now uh, into the acrylic. And then we can go ahead and uh, put on um, <clears throat> our top plate, uh, which is um, our aluminum piece here. Uh, and I need to go ahead and scan this. So 
uh, I will scan the product here or the uh, ID. And now uh, all of the data and torque information uh, moving forward will be all about um, the plate here uh, that we are um, go ahead and <clears throat> fasten with uh, or what we're doing, sorry. And so now um, in this case, we're gonna do our first pass. Uh, we're gonna be torquing these to 1.25 uh, Newton meters. Uh, and so we have uh, our, uh, basically our, our setup here. I'll go ahead and drop in the fasteners just so it's a little bit uh, quicker for us. I will need to change bits as well. Uh, and we can also use uh, that type of equipment to be able to prompt the operator which bit to use with a bit socket tray. And so again, we have our uh, first fastening location here. You can see that the driver is now locked. Uh, we're using a different preset here, uh, this preset five. We have our target torque that we're using. Um, also shows our RPM speed. Uh, and then down below here gives us information on the last fastening um, that, that we did. And so uh, in this case, um, I'm in the correct location. So now I have power. Uh, and so uh, that one, uh, we did torque uh, at 1.25. Um, I could probably increase that. Um, again, I don't have the... Uh, the uh, manual removal tool for the helicoils. So um, we're kind of stuck with what we have, but uh, nevertheless, um, that is where we are. So now we're into our next location, which is down here uh, in the bottom right. And moving on. And again, we don't have um, any power uh, to the tool unless we're in the right spot. And so again, this is our first pass. And now we've moved on to uh, the second pass within here. And you can see that uh, our preset has now changed to preset uh, six. Um, for the helicoil installation, um, the mandrel, uh, we were using preset 15. Um, and then when we inserted those, we were using preset number one. Um, and so now we can come back and do our final torquing. And all we really need to do is follow the pattern um, on the touch. Uh, this gives us, uh, again, the ability um, to let anyone um, do the operation. Um, there's really no uh, uh, need for the, um, uh, the operator really just needs to follow the instructions. and follow the pattern. If there uh, was uh, an error, um, I'll show you what that would look like here within our next um, setup. And so now at this case, we'll go ahead and we'll put our, our PCB board um, onto the uh, standoffs that we have. And so uh, with this, we can go ahead and All right, uh, let's see here.
So uh, with this, um, we still need to scan our uh, product. And we can confirm that. And so now we have uh, these uh, seven fasteners that we need to uh, go ahead and do our uh, process. Um, and oh, so we need to also change the bit. just outside of that. So we'll run that. All right. And so that is basically our first uh, fastening uh, step that we would be doing. Uh, we'll be driving these fasteners to uh, 2100 degrees of rotation. Uh, and then we would go through and do the uh, final torque. Uh, but as you can see with the um, uh, actual data that we're capturing. We have them uh, time date stamped. We have uh, the barcode. So if we ever had a component um, or part that we needed to uh, look at based off of those um, uh, serial numbers uh, for a specific uh, product or ID, um, we can uh, do that with a, a searchable uh, type of field to be able to pull up the information on when that part was done, uh, when it was uh, torqued, uh, what those fasteners were. And so uh, for the sake of time, I'll go ahead and uh, move on as we're getting close to the end of our time. But um, this is how we can uh, basically use this uh, type of uh, data collection um, with our process uh, by scanning a, a specific barcode. Uh, you, you don't necessarily have to scan um, every single component that's being built within a, an assembly, uh, but it could be a uh, uh, maybe a global type of um, scan for uh, that particular uh, build. Um, everything that we have within the uh, DPC Touch um, is basically uh, processing um, through that assembly. And so the operator can't, um, again, move on, um, or they will be alerted that everything that we have done um, will be uh, done correctly. Um, so they don't miss anything um, and they do it, uh, they do it uh, correctly. And so, um, again, as we look through uh, the different um, uh, examples here, um, there are a, a number of different things that, uh, that we can uh, be able to show or uh, do um, with that. But hopefully this gives you a, a better idea of the capabilities of uh, the error proofing process, the ability to capture um, the data, uh, and the uh, overall automation process um, within the use of the DC tool coupled with uh, the error proofing uh, device. And so with that, I think that will bring us uh, to our uh, questions and answers. Um, and so uh, at this time, uh, Chris, do we have any questions? Hey, Dave, thanks. Uh, first question we had is the data, is it only stored in the system or is it, can it be streamed out in real time? Uh, so there are a number of different ways that we can um, gather the data on the, uh, the EC uh, TD and the EC uh, D products. Um, each uh, controller uh, does have an SD card uh, that it can um, capture and store the data uh, internally on the device. We can also uh, stream that data out um, via the RS-232 or uh, through the Ethernet port, um, which is kind of the example that, uh, that I was using. Um, so over the network, um, that information is being sent out. Um, it can be integrated into uh, MES systems. Um, so that is a possibility to be able to stream that data out as well. So there are a number of different ways that we can do it, um, just whatever might work best for your situation. Okay, thanks, Dave. Uh, the next question we have is, 
can the unit connect to an external PLC system? It certainly can. Um, so the uh, DPC touch can be controlled and, and used with the PLC system. Uh, independently, the uh, EC uh, product can also be used uh, with a PLC to be able to be able to call up uh, specific uh, presets that may be used for uh, an operation. But yes, both items can um, be controlled and uh, use a PLC. All right, thanks, Dave. Uh, another question we have is, besides the helicoil, can this be used for like a thread tapping application as well? Uh, thread tapping, um, it can be used uh, for um, a, a thread cutting uh, type of application um, where maybe you need to move through a, a nylon lock or a, a nylon patch um, and uh, can be used for self-tapping screws uh, into plastic uh, and things like that um, for the actual uh, tapping part. Um, uh, as long as it's within the, the fastener, uh, we should be good there. Uh, we do have a, a mode that does allow the system to um, allow more torque during the cutting process uh, and then drop down uh, to look for a final torque. So if there is a, a thread cutting uh, process that uh, during that cutting process, that uh, prevailing torque may be higher than the seating torque, uh, we can tell the system to um, disregard that um, until uh, it cuts through the, uh, the patch or the lock and then uh, go ahead and then seat at the final torque. So there are a couple different ways that we can handle um, the thread cutting um, aspect. I think that may be where the question is coming from, but um, not necessarily a machining type tapping. Okay. Um, a follow-up question on the PLC. Can it, can, is the communication to any protocol or is there a particular protocol system that uh, you use? So uh, the uh, protocols um, are Modbus or Open Protocol. Okay. And then I think this one might be similar to earlier on the data. Is data a log available outside of the system? Uh, yes. Uh, if we stream it, um, then yes. Uh, let's see. The next question I have here is, is the arm connected to electric electric screwdriver system? They just want clarity on that one. Okay, yeah. So the uh, the arm itself um, does uh, have uh, two um, encoders. Um, so it monitors where the tool is in space, uh, and so we can tell the controller, um, or excuse me, the the DPC touch. We can give it basically a, a coordinate system um, where we can uh, teach a specific point, um, and then. That uh, point um, then has uh, basically a go or no go area to it. Um, and that um, can be uh, very large or uh, extremely small depending on the application. Uh, and so uh, both uh, requirements um, for both encoders must be met for it to be considered uh, in the uh, good or acceptable area. So yeah, the arm itself does have communication with the DPC touch. Uh, that is giving it uh, its coordinates, um, and then when it gets it to the right spot, uh, then power is given to the tool. All right, thanks, Dave. Uh, next question we have is: Would like a thread locking compound require any changes to the application setting? Uh, it would depend on if the um, actual um, thread locker is. Um, changing any of the, the clamp force from the actual uh, reduce in friction. But typically, if that's part of your process, um, it's not going to, uh, it would not um, need to be uh, accounted for other than um, it being tested at when it's uh, introduced um, to the application. Hope that makes sense. Um, if you're using um, a fastener that's dry, that doesn't have any um, uh, Loctite on it or, or thread locker, uh, and then you start using a uh, thread locker, uh, you may want to do some testing um, because the uh, thread locker uh, may be introducing um, a lower coefficient of friction, um, and that is going to increase the clamp force or the tension 
that is on the fastener. Uh, so as long as that is a part of the actual um, uh, application um, and it's been specced and designed that way, uh, then there's no uh, no need to be able to uh, or to change uh, what uh, that particular uh, preset might be. So if you're going to be uh, setting to a specific torque value, uh, then you can um, just enter in that as part of the preset, uh, and then the system will take that fastener to that uh, preset or, or preset uh, torque value. Um, or if you want to use a angle or turn um, strategy, uh, the same uh, would would apply there as well. All right, great, Dave. Um, it looks to be like the last of our questions. All right. Uh, thank you so much for uh, joining us today. Um, I hope you found uh, this information useful. Uh, if you have any questions um, about that, feel free to contact us uh, at uh, mountstorque.com. Uh, we have our applications team or our customer service um, uh, sales agents that will be able to uh, help you and assist you with that. Uh, so until uh, next time, thanks so much and have a good day.